with us in the studio this morning to join the conversation is no other person than Comrade Abdulwahab Ekehide, who is the convener Edo Patriots. Good morning to you. Good morning, viewers. Good morning, Nigerians. Um, let's start with um, the news that greeted us this morning from the PDP camp, court and find the PDP um, primary elections. What's your take on this, and what effects would it have? on this coming election from the party? Yeah, if you, the, it's a clear message to all political parties mm. that internal democracy is very important in everything we do as far as uh, democracy is concerned. If you set rules for yourself as a party, you should be able to also uh, obey and respect those rules. Uh, PDP might not just be the only party who is guilty of this. Most of other parties have been guilty. Uh, if you take your, if you take our say by our minds back, you will remember that uh, in Zamfara State in 2019, uh, the whole of elections that was done in Zamfara State, won then by the All Progressive Congress, was nullified based on the fact of issues related to primary elections. The governor, they won the governor, they won all the Senate, they almost won all the House of Reps. But everything was nullified and handed over to the second runner up, which was the PDP. And that's how PDP became, they took all the positions in Zafara State. And if you also look back in, 20, in the same vein, River State, APC was bad from even contesting the elections based on these issues of primary elections. So uh, this is not the first time. It is not new in our democracy. And I think that it's just that maybe sometimes we don't learn lessons. We need to learn lessons. We need to allow democracy to take its place because democracy is a game of majority and numbers. And uh, it's a game that rules needs to be followed. So if you think you are now in charge and you want to subvert the rules of the game, then this is what you get. As you speak, by that pronouncement, it means that PDP don't have a candidate in Edo State, as we speak. Yes, maybe when they appeal, and I know there is room for appeal, they will definitely appeal the judgment, and uh, let's wait and see. Well, the, the PDP chairman has spoken this morning saying that um, whatever came up from the court is not enough to in fact, is of no effect, in his words, is of no effect to the forthcoming September 21 election. You know, I think that uh, he's just trying to save his face or maybe he does not understand the law. Uh, because when the court says the process that brought you up is faulty and is non avoid, do you, can you still stand to say you are, you are still representing those, that position. No. They say the process that brought you before, because before primaries, there were delegates election. And it is those delegates who will elect the governorship candidate. And the court is saying that that process of that delegate, even bringing the delegate at the delegate election, is nullified. So anything that comes out from that process. It's also not, it's a nullity. That's exactly the, 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 even though I'm not a lawyer, but that is very clear. It's not, it's very unambiguous. Mm. The, the, the position of the court, the judgment of the court is unambiguous. It's straight and direct. That the process, that they excluded about 300 or it's something delegates from their list, which was unlawful. And so that makes that process non avoid because they didn't have the right, because those, those delegates were already uh, accredited to vote, but they, 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 they made sure they prevented them from voting. And so based on that, the process is, null, is nullified. If it's nullified, whatever result comes out from that process, it's also nullified. So the PDP chairman, maybe he's just trying to save his face because he knows they will appeal. So that, you know, it's election mm. to, to still give hope to their supporters to say, no, don't lose hope. Because when they hear now, they have nullified. Some of them will now be switching camp. So, no, that is, and that's because he's a politician. That's what he needs to say. So, so that he gives hope to them. No, we are still in the race. Don't mind that judgment. But they are, if you go behind, you see that they are preparing to appeal. 
So if it doesn't matter, why do you want to appeal? Yeah, so they should just they should just uh, they let them know appeal and see whether they will go to they will be on the ballot. Let's look at the political atmosphere, you know, in Edo State at the moment. It's about two months to the elections. Yeah. What would you say about the um, political atmosphere in the in Edo State? You know, in every election, when it's time for elections like this, every election, the atmosphere is always tensed. And Edo is not an exception. It's always tense because uh, it's a game of poaching. It's a game of trying to win more people because democracy is about majority. So everybody, even coming to your party to woo your, you can see what has been happening. Some people are moving from the APC to PDP, but more are even moving from the PDP to the APC. As we speak, the former deputy governor of the state, uh, Comrade Philip Shaibu, who was impeached, is working with the APC, even though he didn't decamp, say, I'm mm. not APC. If you check, the, the national vice chairman of the South-South PDP, Chief Dan Obi, is also working with the APC, even though he has not decamp. If you check, the former governorship candidate of the PDP in Edo State, Ogbede Hama, is what, if I, he has donated his office, campaign office, to the APC. Philip Shabu, you had the other day, also donated about 50 Siena buses to the APC uh, can, uh, can candidate. And you see, so, and I tell you, the challenge PDP have is that they have divided themselves into two or three pieces. Because the, the legacy PDP members, who Obaseki came and met, that gave him the ticket, he has this, he has sidelined them in all activities of the party. So of course it is like the old and the new PDP now. So most of the old PDP are working with the APC, and that is why I think that the PDP do not stand a chance in this election, even if they have a candidate. Hmm. Now let's look at the electorates. What is the atmosphere of um, the electorates? You know, coming in the forthcoming election. No, let me take your mind back to 2020. When uh, Godwin Obaseki sought for second tenure, you know he was in APC and then he moved to the PDP. Yeah. When he sought, he campaigned on a matra. He said, no man is God. Because he was, he told the two people that Adam Sushomole was playing God because he wanted to impose a governor on the state. And people, because of sentiment, followed it and said, yes, we cannot allow Adam to become God. And that was why the result went the way it went. Today, the same Obaseki, that thing he said, he is also now playing God because he did not allow a level playing field ground or for his own party people. Now, if you had, you already had a candidate before he came into the party. That candidate, there was some agreement. Okay, if you come, maybe after this, that this guy, you still give him chance. Now, you went to bring someone who was not even a card carry member of the party the current candidate. It is in this process that he became a member and you brought him and now you see Goanelli also choose the governorship and the deputy governorship. You brought your SSG as the deputy governor. You didn't even take anybody from the legacy party. This man, your SSG, was the one that followed you from APC to join the PDP. Now, you took him as the deputy. You brought a stranger and made him the candidate. You didn't pick from any of the legacy party. So these are the, so he is also now playing God. And I know people are wiser now. They are saying, you say, no man is God. Why do you want to play God? We will not also allow you to play God. That is the situation in Edo State. Let's look at um, the security challenges, you know, that, has been, that we face in Nigeria. Uh, well, the INEC chairman, talking about Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, a um, few days ago already said that um, the INEC is set and that the challenge, security challenges would not have an effect. Uh, but um, let's look at um, juxtaposing his words with the, cli the, the, uh, the atmosphere at the moment. Are we looking to see some sort of voter apathy or are we looking to see a do people coming out en masse to exercise the franchise? What I will tell you is that this election, Edo people will come out in their numbers. You know why? They want to make a statement. And that statement is that no man is God and no man will be allowed to be God in Edo State. And in terms of INEC and security, you see, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu is the INEC chairman, but he's not in charge of security. 
the security lies in the hands of the police and other uh, security agencies. It's completely out of his hands. He will only speak that the assurances that he has been given by the security agencies, but he doesn't have the power to say, okay, security, do this or do that. He cannot even control any security, even on election day. You understand? So he, so he should be focused on making sure that INEC electoral materials get to their polling unit as at when they should get there. Voting should start as at when it's supposed to start. Those are the things he should make sure. And he should, they should, they should, they should, they should, you know, teach, train their ad hoc staff on how to use the beavers and how to do everything seamlessly so that we we'll have issues of uh, maybe Viva's machine not working or the, because INEC chairman also told us that you know there was flooding that affected the INEC office in Benin mm -hmm. that about 4,000 PVCs a uh, Viva's machine were affected which means they need to replace them you understand so those are the things that should concern INEC but I tell you, in terms of the security situation, I think the security agency should be left to handle that. I cannot say. I'm not a security man. I'm <laughs> not a policeman. So I wouldn't know. But, you know, in every election, every politician wants to outsmart the other. Mm. And so in trying to outsmart, so many things will be done. So, but you know, the person in power of the seat is the one that has control of even most of the security apparatus. So he might want to deploy them against the oppositions. So... And that is why we want to call on the federal government to make sure that the security architecture of a state should be changed before the election. Okay, mm. such a call. Uh, before we ra ra wrap it up on um, this segment of the show, uh, we've seen in several other states, you know, and as precedents, you know, the power of incumbency coming to play in elections. In as much as we are having the challenge that has been faced with the PDP at the moment, uh, are we still seeing, are, are, do you think we're going to see um, some heightened influence of incumbency on um, this election? Of course, you cannot, uh, you cannot uh, wave that aside. When you are in power, you are in charge. You know, Obasaki is almost like an emperor in Edo State now, so he's completely in charge. But I tell you, when the people are resolved, it is a matter of the people. They are resolute, they are resolved to say, no, we don't want... Because if you check Edo State for the, in the past seven and a half years or thereabout, you realize that what we have had is promises, promises, and signing of MOUs that are not on ground. Eh, Obasaki promised us a Gilegile seaport. We can't find it. He promised us an airport in Auchi. We can't find it. He promised us an industrial park. We cannot also find it. So if you can't find it, and the people are aware, they are seeing this. You told us about uh, the best education. Now you go to some places in Edo State, students, pupils are sitting in bare floor, under open roof when it's raining, it beats them, and then you say, Adobe. and if you check the jam result, he said, Oh, the best, or you are, like, are we the number one in the country? No, we are not. So the results are very clear. So uh, people are saying it's like a, a referendum that the people want to do this time to say, Look, we are tired of MOUs, and you say, No man is God. Now you are bringing a, a God, you are now a Godfather. You cannot have your way this time around. That is the message from the electorate of Edo State that Obaseki cannot have his way. We will not allow him to bring uh, his godson to be the governor of a new state. And because the court is a technocrat, Obaseki himself is a technocrat. How has a do internally generated revenue increased and what has it been used for? You can see a evil flooding affecting the whole of a do. Benin City, when Adams was governor, he had what they call storm water project. Today, what has happened? Benin is still being ravaged by flooding. And that is why the INEC office is, is, is affected by flooding and their materials are destroyed. So what is the governor doing? This is what we want him to tell those people. What I have done. Because when you are going, you tell people, this is what I have done, this is what I have done. This is why if you vote this one, you... So they shouldn't confuse us with rhetorics and, you know, slogarism of a technocrat. Obasaki is a financial expert. How far has Edo gone? in terms of uh, uh, manager. And if you see the huge debt he has left behind for us to be paying, 
over 400 or something billion is debt that we are, we are going to pay. Well, whichever government comes in, is going to be grappling with how to pay this debt. Should we want him to come? They are all capitalists. What they are interested in is how to build their own estate. They are not interested in building the state. And that is the challenge. And that's a no has. Now the people's eyes have opened and said, no, all these technocrats they are telling us about is just to deceive us. They are capitalists in nation. They want to just make their own empire bigger and bigger and bigger for themselves alone. So we say no to that. Edo people say no, we will no longer accept that, honestly. What else do the Edo people want? Edo people want a governor that is practical, a governor that is at home with everybody, a governor that even before he became governor, he was already solving problems of the people. He was empowering the youth, bringing infrastructure, bringing water, you know, roads, even as a private citizen, somebody who God has blessed and he remembers his home and begin to assist his people. That is the kind, a, a, somebody who has a passion for the people for the improvement of the livelihood of Edo people and the development of the state. That's the kind of person Edo want. They don't want a talkative governor. They want a governor with less words but more action. And that is the governor we are all waiting for. The, I tell you, if you check the profile of uh, distinguished Senator Modi of Pueblo, you realize that he falls into that category. He has been using his money even as a private citizen to help his people. Okay. Uh, well, I think you will have to come back later for this campaign. That you want to do, but I uh, want to thank you so very much for being part of the show this morning. Thank, thank you. So